Welcome to the Hire Yourself Podcast. My name is Pete Gilfill, and I'm here with my business partner, Nat Truitt. We're all about helping people become entrepreneurs or become better business owners. Good morning, Nat. Good morning, Pete. How are you doing? I am doing good. Doing good. A little confession, though. I'm coming off vacation, and I got a cheating heart. What exactly is a cheating heart? Well, you know, you know, I was raised in a Ford family. Right? Oh, no. Raised, yes, grandfather, father, owned Ford dealerships. I worked for Ford 17 years. I've only owned Fords. I think I've, I probably owned 20 Fords in my, in my day, right? So I am a Ford guy. So we go on vacation and I have to rent the vehicle for my family, right? So we got a family of six and we got all these bags, right? I, I threatened my kids. I said, look, you can only have one suitcase because I worry about the size of vehicle that we can fit in, right? right. So we get get to the uh, budget and the, the only thing they really have for us is a minivan. I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh. We're gonna, all of us are gonna fit the minivan plus our seven bags, right? With suitcases and, and duffel bags. And I gotta tell you, we got a Sienna minivan. Yeah. And this was a 2021. I've never seen a vehicle that is so utilitarian. Unbelievable. So we take <laughs> the seven bags, right? And we get them all in the back area. So it's got a, like a deep cargo area. So I get all seven suitcases in the back storage area. And I still have room to see out the back glass as I'm driving, right? Then I load my family in there. And both the second row, the third row, they got a ton of leg room. Right. So they got plenty of room to do what they got to do as we're driving up into the mountains. And so my kids are like, this is unbelievable. I mean, we've had Ford Expedition ELs. We've had big, big vehicles, stuff like that. They've never had this much room. So they're they're loving it. Right. So I get in, I start driving in and it's it's a little sluggish. It's one of those hybrids. Right. It's okay. a, it's a hybrid. I'm, like, I'm I'm not really a hybrid guy. Right. But I tell you, I'm driving this thing and it the hybrid is now so good that you can be going 50 miles an hour and it's still on the electric side, right? So right. what this translates to is incredible gas mileage. So we drove this vehicle, I'm not kidding you, for nine days. Went up the mountain, <laughs> down the mountain. We did a bunch of excursions. And I'm telling you, we probably got 600 miles to the tank. We returned the vehicle after nine days. I never filled it up. It still had 100 miles of range left. Wow. It was an incredible vehicle. So I, I got home and I called my Ford dealer. I said, listen, I, I don't know. Ford doesn't have any minivans. I think I, I might have to buy a Toyota. <laughs> the phone line went silent. So, so I have a bit of a cheating heart today. So yeah. we'll see. Well, it makes sense. There's, I mean, you see those uh, car, those minivans on the road, like everywhere. So there must be a reason, right? Yeah. Is if you can get past that, you know, you're kind of, uh, you know, kind of that stigma of associated with minivans, but I got to right. tell you, just a great, great vehicle. So very, very, so there's my endorsement for the uh, Toyota Sienna. So, all right, Nat, I thought today what we do is we talk about the 10 ways to best leverage your franchise network. So when you become a franchisee, you become part of this network, right? So there are many different benefits. And I thought today what we do is we talk about the 10 benefits that people have when they join a franchise system. Sound good? Yeah, that's awesome. You're talking about like the um, franchise unit owner network. Is that yeah, what you're about? yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you're a franchisee and so many people think, oh, I'm going to get all this great support from the franchisor. But you also have that whole network of other franchisees that you can leverage to be successful. And, and certainly you, you help your, your peers, too. So so number one, um, when I think a little bit about leveraging um, a network and, and you probably did this when you had your uh, franchise. I know I did with mine. When you have a problem, you can pick up the phone or in today's world, you can do a Zoom session with a franchisee and, and say, hey, have you experienced this problem? Did, did you do that much? Pick up the phone and just try to leverage your other franchisees to kind of solve a problem or, or work through I, an idea? Yeah, for me, it even started earlier than that it, in the initial training. So when you go to the uh, corporate headquarters for your initial training, you know, you're in like a class. So you have, you know, whether it's, uh, three other you know groups or 10 other groups but you have like almost like a freshman class of uh, franchise owners so you're all in there together and you know you start to build relationships and you start to like brainstorm and kick things back and forth and all that and then as I came back home and started implementing you know that was kind of my like initial like uh, people because I was like really comfortable reaching out to them 
Um, and then as I, you know, I would call the, like for, I was in Chicago, but for example, I'd call the Milwaukee person that was a little further along down the path. Yeah, sure. And I'd call and ask them questions and they were like all super happy to help because, you know, that I always say like a rising tide raises all ships. So like if they can help me be successful, it just helps the whole system okay. keep on doing yeah. good. So there are just, they're one phone call away, one Zoom call away, right? And you develop that network of other franchisees that you can lean on. Did you ever, I know a second way that you can leverage a network is going and actually visiting with a franchisee, go to their location if they have a facility or or to, to their territory and, and visit with them. Did, did you ever do that? Yeah, totally. The, um, well, you know, with the senior care, it's a um, service-based business. So your employees are out in the field but you still have to set up an office. And so it's, that's kind of like a, a gray area. It's like, you don't know exactly what that looks like or feels like. A lot of times corporate will kind of have off, an office set up or you'll go to visit um, during discovery day or training, you'll go visit corporate locations. Mm -hmm. But it's super helpful to go pop in and see how other people are setting up their offices. Um, you know, the, I think the retail is always gonna be a little bit more cookie cutter for, for better or for worse, right? Cause you're gonna you know, build it out a specific way, way, but it's super helpful to do some on-site visits. Well, and I thought, you know, like I've seen franchisees go visit another franchisee to see the way in which they're operating, right? So go spend, we'll call it the day in the life of with them, right? Which is really important. One of the things that, you know, as, as I was a master franchisee, I would call upon the other franchisee to do brainstorming sessions, right? So I'd call them and say, hey, I'm thinking about this marketing idea. What do you think? And so we would go back and forth. Did, and I know you mentioned that earlier. Did you do a lot of brainstorming as, as a franchisee with other franchisees in your network? We did. In Chicago, we had like a regional group. So we actually would all get together once a month. I was, as you were saying that brainstorming, I was like, yes, if you're going to focus on brainstorming, it should be on sales, 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 right? <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning. So yeah, we spent a lot of time focusing on sales, um, you know, what's working, what's not working kind of in your region. Um, you know, also you could um, kind of pool your resources. Like in Chicago, we could all do radio, use a phone number and then distribute the leads. Um, you could also do the same thing with printed materials. Um, there's a lot of brainstorming you can do, especially re like regional, like kind of cooperative advertising stuff. Was that an accountability group, right? So like at Ford, they would have like dealer 20 groups where all the Ford franchisees would get together, you know, like 10 of them on a regular basis and go through their numbers and kind of hold each other accountable. Did, did you have any of that when, when you were franchising? Um, yeah, I was early on. So with the brand, so we did... Um, you know, corporate kind of facilitated that. So, you know, you'd have the corporate calls and then, you know, you always have kind of the leaderboard and everybody being naturally competitive was trying to fight to the top. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the other things that you can do is that I, I know franchisers provide vendors, like like a oh, yeah. Pay, yeah, payment merchant systems, things like that. Um, and, and they can be good. But sometimes I've learned that you can kind of leverage franchisees because sometimes they find a better uh, vendor. Uh, maybe it's more local. Maybe it's just they just do a better job. Did, did you ever kind of lean on other franchisees to, to kind of figure out vendor relationships? I'm trying to think like um, it seemed like, you know, our franchise did a really good job with the vendors. And so um, I was actually pretty happy. And but sometimes, you know, as you're kind of doing that brainstorming and you have like, hey, let's do, you know, door hangers, right? Maybe corporate doesn't have a vendor for that. So then you can kind of like, you know, see if anybody knows a vendor for, for that. Um, so I think as you're kind of trying new things, there's always room to try to find a vendor for that. Well, and I guess you, you say vendors, it could also be people providing services like accountants or, or yeah, you know, that's, things like that. That'd be huge. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. I mean, it's uh, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. They understand your business. What yep. about, uh, you know, another thing, uh, advantage of having a network is that sometimes it's employee referrals, right? Where they may, you, you lean on somebody and say, listen, I'm, I'm looking for a good manager to lead my next location. Do you know anybody? Did, did you ever kind of leverage your other franchisees to, is it, pertains to finding good talent or people um i felt like we were all we were always trying to you know find find, find good people so it wasn't like you could necessarily um you know borrow somebody or recruit somebody away but i think as you're building a good brand you're attracting the right people and then um it was interesting you know people would uh kind of like get promoted from within yeah. uh, so i think that there's a lot of potential for that well and sometimes you have a great 
person that you're you're interviewing with, but maybe they don't fit your organization. They're pretty good. Uh, you may refer them to another franchisee that it might be a better fit, uh, yeah. both geographically or just for the organization. So I would say that happens a lot geographically because if somebody's yeah. like 30 miles away, it's like, you know, why don't you interview with the, you know, the, the location that's in your backyard versus, you know, even thinking about commuting here. Yeah, no, I think that's right. So I think there's some a natural employee referrals there. What about, and you mentioned it earlier, and, and we certainly did it at Ford, you know, kind of the, we'll call it the tier two advertising, tier two marketing, right? Yeah. Where a group of franchisees in a geographic area, in your case, I think it was probably the Chicago metropolitan area, where you come together, you leverage your funds to do a joint marketing or advertising campaign. Certainly you guys did that, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, that was really good. And also kind of reduced the risk at the beginning, right? Because, you know, to buy radio in Chicago is super expensive. Um, you know, an example of that, you know, a lot, I think Serta Pro Painting does a good job. You know, most people listening to the podcast probably, you know, if they listen to AM radio or um, they probably hear the like Serta Pro advertising, but that's a good example of kind of cooperative marketing. Yeah. Yeah, kind of tier two advertising. Yeah, I know uh, Hannah Stone does a really good job with it too, right? They did a yeah. Christmas Christmas in uh, July with a gift card promotion. So, so there's a lot of synergies and savings, and I think just it's it's a great idea. What about when you were a franchisee? Did you lean on any other franchisees in the network to to mentor you, or did you mentor anybody? I know that's another great way to leverage it is to to have a mentor within the system. Um, yeah, that's a Good question. Um, I was fairly early on, like within the first 100. But yeah, I mean, like I remember, you know, the franchise owner number one, number two, number three. I definitely, you know, was took the time to build a relationship with them because you know they were like three or four or five years down the road, and I think that they enjoyed mentoring, you know, the new guys on the block. And I didn't necessarily have anything formal. But I think that there's opportunity for that. I mean, I think, you know, as you have these ideas, it's, you know, possible to put together a mentoring group and probably, you know, let's be, let's be honest, that was a long time ago. So probably, you know, that franchise systems are a lot more sophisticated and have that already in place today. Well, yeah. And I think it's, it's good. If you can draw upon somebody and they're, they're willing to help you, uh, certainly you're going to pay that forward with somebody else down the line. Like I do a lot of that with my franchise consulting, right? I'll, I'll mm -hmm. mentor other consultants just because that's just a good way to improve my skills, but also help somebody else and, and kind of pay it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The nurses have that saying, uh, learn one, do one, teach one. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I think it does make you like, as you're helping other people, it actually helps you kind of get your your thoughts together makes you better. Certainly. Yeah, certainly. So mentoring, it can be a big part of it. What about, um, you know, as, as we talk about uh, customer referrals, did you ever, that might be another benefit of a network. So maybe somebody reaches out to you. They're not in your geographic area. They need help. Uh, in your case, it was uh, senior care, right? They need help taking care of mom. They're not in your area. Would you ever refer customers to your other, other franchisees and say, listen, I, they're, they're not in my area. Can, oh, can yeah. you help this person? I would say that happens on a daily basis because if you're doing a good job marketing, you're going to get, you're going to get the phone calls or emails or, you know, the inquiries. And then, you know, they're not all going to be in your, your geography, but I actually always thought that that was a huge positive because I think of franchising as being hyper-local. So I like the idea, you know, like, hey, if I have people that are in my zip codes, inquiry is not my zip codes, I'm going to refer them out because the other, it happens both ways, right? So then you're kind of, like I said, I like the hyper-local strategy. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And I think it's... Um all these things, as you look at leveraging the network, the 10 things we've talked about, it's this whole idea of that you lean on the network, but the network also leans on you, right? You, you're kind of paying it forward. So yeah. if you're willing to play all out and help others, they're going to do the same thing for you. And, and I think that's the real benefit of a franchise network is that, sure, you, you have that franchisor that provides all that great support. But if you have this network that you can lean on, that just makes you stronger. And I, I think, Nat, we've seen the strength of that during the last 15, 18 months with this pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So as business owners went through this crazy period, we keep hoping it's going to end. We don't know. But but the idea is, is that they the franchisers were helping them, their business partner, but they also had that whole network of other franchisees to lean on. 
or right. other franchises can lean on them. And I think that's a huge advantage. And I think that's why in my belief is that more franchises were successful during this last 18 months than kind of the mom and pops. They just had all that extra support. Would you agree yeah. with that? Totally. You know, it's like, you don't need, you, you don't even realize the value of emotional support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, sometimes it's just good to, you know, call up somebody and be like, Oh my gosh, can you believe this? You know? And they're like, yeah, it's like, it's unbelievable. I can't, I can't hire employees. Nobody wants to work or, you know, it's like we have to buy all these PPE or, or whatever. Right. But you know, there's like emotional support and you know, you know that you can get through it together. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Nat, uh, again, there are a lot of advantages to being a franchise owner is certainly having a network behind you. As all right. So, so real quick, Pete, like here would have, here would have been my strategy with the, uh, car situation at the airport <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so, but you're so, paying it forward here give me a little advice on cars all right exactly. let's hear it. so i think my strategy with uh you said you had all your like four kids and two adults right and, and yeah. six or seven suitcases so i'm pretty sure my strategy would have been like okay i'm gonna get a minivan and then i think it's probably important that we get like a two-seater convertible <laughs> and I'll drive the convertible and, you know, mom and the kids go in the minivan or, or something along those lines. <laughs> and, and, and you know, my wife, you think that would have went over in my household. Honey, yeah, she, you're going to take the, the luggage and the kids and I'm going to get in the convertible by myself. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe, yeah, I guess she probably would have been in the, yeah. Either way, you would have ended up driving the minivan. Uh, that's right. All right, man. Uh, Great right, chat today. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Hire Yourself podcast. For more resources, check out our website at hireyourself.com. And remember to subscribe to this podcast to receive each episode. Please leave us a rating and we'd love to hear your feedback or suggestions for topics.